Thanks for joining us. It's a cell phone bill that costs taxpayers $20,000 and that former Deputy Premier Thomas Lukasik says was completely legitimate. We've now learned more about the legal issue Lukasik says forced him to rack up all of those roaming charges. Our legislative reporter Kim Trinacity reports. CBC News discovered the legal issue was a domestic problem involving a member of Alison Redford's cabinet. It was a very urgent situation. As Deputy Premier Thomas Lukasik says, the problem was dropped into his lap by the Premier's office. I advised that cabinet minister to retain legal counsel. The cabinet minister didn't know anybody, so made a phone call. Uh, in the middle of the night, uh, got that cabinet minister legal representation the next day. Lukasik says he made a Skype call and received legal documents that are all under a publication ban. All of that adding up to a $20,000 bill. The opposition says the PC party should repay taxpayers. Now it may well not be a good thing for one of their cabinet ministers from a political perspective to have a scandal like this go out into the public, but it's certainly not government business. The Premier's office says it's considering if it will investigate how news of the big bill was leaked to the media by an anonymous source. Premier Hancock in Charlottetown for the Premier's conference was unavailable to comment on the latest development. Political scientist Dwayne Bratt is amazed by the intensity of mudslinging and scandals in the PC leadership race, but feels in this case the calls and emails were government business regardless of the cost. If this was a next door neighbor or a brother-in-law, that's personal. But a cabinet minister, no, I, I take that as that was his role and responsibility within cabinet. And he did coordinate with the, uh, with the premier's office. All this, and there's just over a week to go before members of the PC party cast a ballot for the person they want to lead their party and become the next premier. Kim Trinacity, CBC News, Edmonton. A convicted drunk